All right, welcome back to Minimalist Terrain. I'm going to do a, a, a scenery walkthrough um, this time for two reasons. One, I know that I need to make more of this post-apocalyptic stuff, but two, to give you more of a concept of what I mean when I'm using the word minimalist. So, I guess the first question is, if you turned up to a friend's house or a war games convention um, or a competition or anything like that, and you were presented with something like this as your playing board, would you be disappointed? Would you refuse to play on it? Or would you just get on with the game? Second thing, would you just be getting on with the game or would you be standing and, and looking at everything in minute detail and, and criticising the build quality? Now the answer to those questions is really going to be to everyone's individual taste. If you weren't happy playing on a board like this and you think that the scenery is not detailed enough then this isn't the channel for you. There are pr plenty of great tutorials on how to do really brilliant realistic terrain that you would be happy with and I'm sure your players would be happy with. Go head over to them, no harm, no foul. This is my take on it and this is, as I said before, done more for quickness when you're a little bit more pushed for time but you want to get something on the table that is of, I guess, an acceptable quality. So, um, my first impressions looking at it. One, <laughs> I need more terrain. Um, this one, this particular board was done for a war game called Terminator Genesis by River Horse. I'll um, leave the, the link up on the top. And it's set in that po post-apocalyptic future where Skynet has pretty much killed everyone off and the surviving humans are attempting to fight back against the machines. It's a little bit different in that apart from just rubble and ruined buildings and the kind of thing that you would expect, the game does rely quite heavily on things like barricades, of which I've got a couple. Um, in the box set of the game you do get cardboard ones and I've started replacing those with, with more modelled ones and because of the amount of barricades that you use in order to slow the Terminators down when they're attacking you I can instantly see that I need to make more of those. That's great. Um, there's a, a couple of different methods um, that we can use for that and I'll, um, I'll certainly be showing you how to, to do some of that in one of the tutorials. What else have we got? We've, we've certainly got ruined buildings. Now, these ones were 3D printed. Okay, I'll show you a bit closer up. Yes, I've been doing it for a long time and I've got um, far more in the way of tools and toys than a person starting out would. My printer is not one of the brilliant ones. It was a, a kit set, an ANET A8. The resolution on it is is probably not really good enough um, to be printing out figures and, and that sort of thing. But for larger scale stuff, certainly like ruined buildings and um, also these barricades were done on that. Um, it's, it's certainly good enough for that job and it's the kind of thing where you can just set it off, walk away, be getting on with something else and you come back um, a couple of hours later and you've got a, a load of buildings. It's not just a, a straight print, I have added to it slightly. In fact, let's get this one back. All right. Yes, you can probably still see that there are some... Um, some print lines on it, you can certainly see it more around the bricks and things like that. But to cover that over, so that at a glance um, it looks like a, a flat surface, I have added a little bit of texturing because obviously that's supposed to be concrete. And let's face it, at that kind of distance, you can't tell. Okay, and that is the part of the core of what I'm trying to get across. Unless you really, really examine things closely you're not going to be able to tell that it's quite a rough job compared to some other things. What else have we got? This one, you've already seen me talk about this one in a, in a, um, a previous video. Um, it was just an old toy car, it had been battered. Um, I've taken the tyres off, stuck it to a base, added some texture, given it a paint job. There you go, burned out car. Oh, the, um, the boards themselves. 
MDF, we had an old chest of drawers that when we moved house, um, it was all battered and, and starting to fall apart. It was just going to go straight into the skip. So I grabbed the, the boards from the, the bottom of the drawers, recycled them, added some texture. Um, please excuse the, the grass, they were in the, uh, in the garage and, and um, sitting a little bit too close to the, the lawnmower. Um, but that will vacuum off um, once, I, once I get the, uh, to it properly with a, a bit of a brush. It's been a couple of years since I made those and I'll be perfectly honest, I'm trying to remember what I used. I get the feeling that um, I coated both sides with normal wallpaper paste just so that that would counteract any, any warping of the boards and it hasn't altogether, but I mean as long as you've got something quite heavy on that corner it'll stick down. And then it was just build a sand on the top and then a, a bit of a paint and a bit of a dry brush. That's the first game specific boards um, that I've made. All the rest of the ones I've done have been quite generic. But seeing as it was how it was from what dirt wallpaper paste and, and, and reclaimed materials, I'm not too unhappy with the result. To be perfectly honest, this is actually the first time that I've had the whole collection laid out. Um, I've never done that before, so it's it's quite exciting. But what else do we have? These ones. Now Quite big and imposing. No, I did not scratch build these. These are actually kits from a firm called Amira. They are vacuum plastic kits. Quite simple in their in their design. Because they're the vacuum for vacuum foam, they don't have the same sort of detail that you get from the injection molded kits that you you get from other manufacturers or the um the the more modern laser cut mdf ones you can you can get quite intricate with those however they're nice they're big they are cheap immensely playable you've got um you know they're certainly sturdy enough to to take miniatures on uh, nice large amounts of, of flat ground um, while we're here, I'll just point out something that I, I um, talked about in, in a previous video about ground cover. This was done with a blend of the, the number three sand grit larger stuff. In fact, because... Actually, no, I tell a lie. This is actually number four. I can see some coral sand in. So number four, so the largest of the, the blends that I use, plus um, some offcuts in there, just to give it the impression that there is, um, you know, pieces of metal or um, wire struts or, or, or tiles or, or that sort of thing. And they've just been picked out in a different colour, just so that it breaks up the colour a little bit. Not enough that you're spending massive amounts of time on it, because that's not what we're about, but enough to give it a little bit of interest and small enough that there is still no issue with placing a miniature on top of it um, and it falling over or anything like that. So yeah, I've got two more Amira kits and I'll do a, a, a build on those. One of them is a, um, a, an even bigger structure than this one. I will admit to flagrant nepotism. Um, Amira is um, a company from the UK, even though I'm in New Zealand at the moment. Um, and I do like using their stuff because for, not only because it fits in with the style of terrain that I like, but also because their factory is only a couple of miles away from where I spent my childhood. So, <laughs> even though I'm half a planet away, shop local. Now, I've just realised I've made a mistake. There is actually some terrain that I forgot about um, because I had been busy working on it in a different area, so it wasn't stored with all the rest of the completed stuff. So, I'll have a little bit of a rearranged round of the table. Um, and, and get those pieces on. Excuse me one second. Another little 3D printed one. So this was um, another 3D print, but it didn't work out properly. The um, the top of the, as you can see, they're um, storage containers, um, or shipping containers rather. Um, and the, the top, um, I made a, a mistake in the settings and the, the, the top didn't come out with its um, 
sort of corrugated foam. So rather than throw them away, um, I just put some dirt on and put them together as a, a single piece. Right, yeah, table's a little bit more full, but we still need to, we, we definitely still need some more of those barricades that, that Terminator Genesis uses. What was I going to show you? Yes, so this one and this one and this. These were all taken from the, the army, sort of army man um, play sets um, where you get the, you, you get a number of soldiers and you, you get some toy vehicles and, and some terrain and things like that. Um, so these have, have simply been repurposed, um, given a, a little bit of a coat of paint. Um, I'm not sure about that one in a, a post epoch setting. Um, that's probably going to be better for just a more modern, I don't know, outdoor construction site maybe. So we'll leave that one off. Um, but yeah, these barricades, a little bit of plastic hard on the bottom, a little bit of ground cover and it just fits right on and, and just adds a, a little bit of detail to the place. But as you can see, pretty much all of it is just open ground so that it is all playable. You can tell that there's buildings there, you can tell that there's ruins there, but it's all a really simple paint scheme and apart from the, well I mean even the big blocky things like the shipping containers, yes you can't get inside them, but your miniatures can climb on top. They can climb on top of the car. It's only really the, the uprights of walls where you can't actually balance a miniature on. And that's the whole idea of what we're trying to get towards. So there, as usual, like and subscribe and hit thumbs up and bells and, and all that kind of thing. Um, this is the kind of thing that we are aiming towards and you're going to be seeing me doing certainly more construction to go along with this set. I am pretty happy with the, the way that it looks. Like I say, it's the first time that I've, I've set it up. But yeah, it's getting there. More work, more crafting. You should get on with some as well.